Okay, let's give you guys a related rates example. So let's say you've got a rocket launch, the rocket being launched. So here when t equals zero, the rocket is here. One second later, the rocket is here. Another second later, the rocket is here. And a third second later, the rocket is here. The rocket is traveling at a constant speed of 300 meters per second. So what that means is one second, it would have traveled 300. Another second later, it would have traveled another 300 and another second, another 300. And you are standing 1,000 meters away from the uh, rocket. Let, uh, let's say you're trying to film this rocket. So uh, you're trying to film this rocket. So another second later, the rocket would be here. Another second later, the rocket would be here. So you're trying to keep track of this angle here. Um, this angle here, one second later, the, the camera would have ro rotated this amount of an angle. Another second later, the, ang the camera would have rotated this amount of an angle. Another second later, the, ang the uh, camera would have ro rotated this amount of an angle. Something that you should realize is that um, in the same period of time, this angle would be bigger than, than, uh, than this angle. And this angle here would be bigger than this angle here. So let me just illustrate this. Um, let's, let me exaggerate the situation. Hang on. So uh, let's say um, one second later, let's just say the rocket is here. Another second later, the rocket is here. Instead of me giving you a big distance here, I'm just going to exaggerate just to illustrate my point. Let's say you're standing here at the moment. So one second later, one second later, you would, uh, the camera would have swept away this amount of an angle. Another second later, the uh, camera would have swept away this amount of an angle. So when I, when I exaggerate the situation, you can clearly see that this angle is bigger, much, much bigger than this angle here. So that means d theta by dt here would be bigger here than, to, than it is here. Um, so, the, so you can think of this as being the angle being rotated, the angle that has been rotated in a given uh, amount of time. So in one second, you have swept away a big angle here. Uh, in the same amount of time, one second, you would have swept away a smaller angle. So the point here is that the um, hang on. The point here is that d theta in this in in the period of one second, d theta by dt here would be bigger here than it is right here. So this d theta by by dt here would be smaller. Okay. So our job is to find d theta. Our job is to find wh uh, when the rocket is precisely 500 meters above the ground, precisely at this point here, what is, what is d theta by dt? This is what we're trying to find okay, at this precise moment in time. Not here, because here d, d, theta, uh, d, uh, d theta by dt here would be different from the d theta by dt at time equals 2. So we want to find d theta by dt at precisely um, 500 meters above the ground. Okay, so the first step is to find something that connects uh, this thing here. Let's call this h, the height, and let's call well, uh, let's call this length here d. Let's just call it d. Okay, so find something that connects everything. We want something that connects h, uh, theta, and this thing here. Um, we uh, we don't actually need this D, but let, let me try and introduce this D to explain something to you. So you, you want to find D theta by DT, ultimately. You want to find, when it comes to related rates, you want to f look at the situation and find something that connects to all the things that you want to know. You want to know H, you want to know uh, theta. Um, let, let's, let's just choose the wrong thing to use. Let's use Pythagoras. So here, if you use D squared, uh, equals h squared and then plus this length squared. So we are using the wrong thing here, squared. If you use Pythagoras, you're not going to be able to obtain d theta by dt because the angle is not involved. So you don't really want to use Pythagoras. You want to find something else that connects the angle as well because you're interested in the angle and you, you want to use the h as well. Here you've got the h, but you don't have the angle. So don't use Pythagoras on, on this situation. What you should use is tan. So, uh, so the, the, the formula that connects 
the whole situation would be tan. Look, tan the angle equals h over the adjacent, which would be um, 1000. So here, you've got the angles involved, so that means you can extract your d, d theta by dt. You've got the height, uh, so as the rocket's being launched, the height is changing all the time, so you've got your h. We don't care about the d. We don't really care about the D. So the formula we should be using is this thing here. This thing connects everything that we want to know. Uh, we want to know theta, and it's right there. So using this formula here, um, now um, now you you've, when it comes to related rates, you've got to establish as time ticks away, what changes, what depends on time. You see, as time ticks away, definitely the the um, the angle changes. So so D um, so the angle as a so the angle is a function of time. You have to realize that as time ticks away, the angle changes. Um, this h here, as time ticks away, does the height of the rocket change? Yes, it does, because h is a function of time. You have to realize that. Um, as time ticks away, does this length, you standing 1,000 meters away, does that change as time ticks away? No, it doesn't change. It does not change because as time ticks away, you're always going to stand 1,000 meters away from the rocket. So, so uh, this length here, the adjacent, has nothing to do with time, whereas uh, the angle will have will have something to do with time. As time ticks away, the ang the angle changes, the height changes as time ticks away. So when you use um, when you when you diff when you come to differentiate this. When it comes to related rates, differentiate this. So that will then give you. Um, 1 over cos squared theta and then because because um, theta is a function of time when it comes to related rates you've got to stick d theta by dt and I've already um, I've done some videos to explain why you stick this thing in here uh, and then that equals now um, looking at this as time ticks away you know h changes um, as time ticks away so so differentiate this hang on let's imagine let's imagine this thing as um, 1 over 1000 times h so this is like one thing times another thing this is a variable because as time ticks away uh, the h the height changes so when you come to differentiate this it would be just the 1, 000, 1 over 1000 1 over 1000 um, that that when you differentiate this, it will just give you this. Now, because h is a um, a function of time, you need to stick d h by d t when it comes to related rates. And I've done I've done many videos to explain why you do this. So um, so this is a uh, this is what we need to know. We need to extract d theta by d t. So hang on, let me move down here. So you start out with um, you find a formula that connects everything, which is this thing here. You know that theta is uh, a function of time. You know h is a function of time. Um, so when you come to differentiate this, it will then give you this. When you come to differentiate this, it will then give you this. And there are many ways of doing this because when you differentiate tan, uh, when you differentiate tan, you can use you can use um, one over cos squared theta because there there are many ways of differentiating tan. Uh, when you differentiate tan, you could use um, secant squared theta. Um, I haven't explained this. In the future, I will explain more on secant squared. And when you differentiate tan, you can also use, um, I think, 1 plus tan squared theta. You can also use this. There are many ways of differentiating tan. For this example, we are going to use this. So we are currently here at the moment. Uh, we want to know this d theta by dt. Uh, we know dh by dt. dh by dt is this thing here. dh by dt is the rocket traveling at um, at a speed of 300 because h is the height and and dh by dt is the movement in the height direction, if that makes sense, for a given period of time. So dh by dt is actually 300 because it's traveling vertically upwards at 300 meters per second. So going back down here, we know we know that this is 300. We know that this is 300. So we uh, we, we 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 can put it into here. But bef be but before we can do that, we need to um, translate cos squared theta. Um, we we need to translate cos squared theta. So going 
looking back at the uh, the rocket situation, um, um, it's 500 meters up, and it's 1,000 meters across. We need to translate cos squared. Well, this is cos here. This is cos theta. Cos theta. We need to we need to know d now. So using Pythagoras, using Pythagoras, this thing squared equals uh, this squared, and then plus this squared. So d equals this thing here. So hang on. So now that we know d, now that we know d, well, cos is this thing here. Hang on. Cos, cos is adjacent, which is one thousand, uh, over hypotenuse, which is which is this thing here, which is this thing here. So we know cos. Now we want to know cos squared because we need to translate this. We need to translate this block. We need to translate this block. So cos squared equals cos squared equals this thing here. So we can put this thing here into cos squared. Hang on. Into into cos squared. We need to put it into here. So that will then give us this. So now it's just a matter of extracting d theta by dt. So tidy this up. If you tidy this up, it will then give you this, uh, this, and then uh, and then divide both sides by this thing here. So when you divide it by 5 over 4, you times the reciprocal of the second, 4 over 5. So this will become 12, and this will become 50. Tidy this up, it will give you 6 over 25 radians per second. This is your final answer. Okay?